Well, it's uh, three days till Christmas. Time is half twelve. I'm just on my way down the river for a walk because uh, when I spoke to Alexa this morning and I said, how's the weather? She says it was a canny day and then when I asked her how's the weather tomorrow, snow showers and rain. So I thought, oh, right, well, I best get away then. I might be stuck in tomorrow. It doesn't stop us from walking, but it stops us from driving. I don't like driving in the snow. I'm quite capable of driving in the snow, but I don't like it because, uh, you know, it's, we live in a hilly area, we all live in a hilly area, and not only can you slide, but somebody else might hit you, so. I prefer to not drive in the snow. Right, so uh, I used to live in there actually, by the way, in the West Egg, that was called. <coughs> so the river is just bottom of this bank. Um, you'll see in a second, I just. Uh, around the corner there's some like laybys outside people's houses well part of the roads marked off and uh, you can park there so I park here generally behind this little white van so that's it right <coughs> I'm on my way to the river. I'm going to go the opposite way around today, just for a change. Um, so along the river, then up through the woods, and then come out at the far end, and then uh, walk all the way along the river on the way back. It's always cold when you first start off, like. But, um, soon warm up, especially when I get in the woods, because it's a climb. It's not flat like this. I expect there'd be quite a bit of mud down there the day as well. Anyway, hopefully, this is not my last uh, walk out for a while. If the snow comes, I'll just uh, I'll just be going along the dune walk. More handy. Not if the snow has fallen, of course. I don't mind it being on the ground, but uh, as I said the other day, it was uh, I've, I've seen fourteen inches of snow, I suppose. There's where. Christmas tree with the shit bags in. Disgrace, isn't it? <clears throat> right, well, there's no cars here the day. So I'm expecting that there's not many people there. Find out as we go along. Here's a bridge. It's quite muddy actually. On the bridge. Uh, so I would imagine it's quite muddy along there anyway. There's a river, what I normally look at, on this side. Yeah, <laughs> it is very muddy today. It's, uh, if, well, Two or three people up in front of us. I was going to see a family, but uh, yeah, 
four adults and a kid. But um, very muddy, yeah, very muddy. They must have walked maybe as far as I have. They maybe also have parked along by the houses. Because there's no cars there, so. I've never seen it as muddy. It's hard to find somewhere to walk, actually. There's that much mud. Never mind. Nice fresh air. I hear voices up in the trees there somewhere, but... Oh, it's kids coming behind us, actually. There's me thinking there's not many people here. There's actually loads. Uh, I must have passed about 10 going the other direction. Um, coming up to the Lovelock Bridge. There's people on it at the minute, like. So, uh, I'll check the padlocks on the way back. See how many. I'll do now, I'll date now. Because I'm moving off. <clears throat> right. One, two, three, four, five. Five on that side. Six, seven, eight. Still eight. I just looked over the side where those couple of kids come past. Um, I might go back that way myself. See if it's gone through all that mud. So, only, only eight padlocks still. Thought there might have been more by now, like. It's, uh, I don't know, maybe three, four weeks, I think, since I was last down here. Um, yeah, about three or four weeks, I think. A few sheep look. They're all coming over. I must think I've got something to eat for them. <coughs> Quite tame as well. That one's got holes. <coughs> <laughs> really? So this is a journey going the opposite way. Up the skinny little path to start with. And then... Uh, up through the woods. I don't think it should be so muddy in the woods. Well, hopefully not. This is when you start to get warmed up because uh, once I get to the end of this track is uh, when I start climbing up through the woods. You're not actually climbing, but you know what I mean. It's uh, it's an uphill for about half a mile or something. So. We'll see how that, how that goes anyway. Yeah, it's very muddy in the woods, so I was completely wrong. <sighs> I've stopped for two minutes. It's uh, heavy walking uphill just to get my breath back a bit. It's 
sweating now, are it? <coughs> um, just a, a thing. Uh, anybody can type, leave a message on the uh, on YouTube when you see the video, and I have them all like held as private until I've read them first. And the reason I done that was because I. Now and again I get some stupid messages, so uh, I'll just uh, remove them. And uh, I can either remove, reply, or just read. So uh, anybody wants to leave a message, you're welcome to leave a message. And as I say, no, nobody else can see it until I've approved it. So if it's... Um, you know, if it's normal, something about the video, I generally uh, approve it in reply. If it's private, it stays private. And if it's stupid, well, it just goes in the bin. So I just thought I'd let you know that because a lot of people don't know that they can actually leave a message. So, uh, whoop, yeah. Aye, it's slippy. Very slippy. These uh, Berg horse, Berg house shoes are gone on a boot. These, what's done over a thousand mile? Yeah, they've done over a thousand mile. We've got no grip left. Still good shoes, but uh, they're not very good for walking in the mud. Well, especially when you're going uphill. I've got my stick as well, of course, so. That's handy. That's it. Uh, I've just come through there. I'm shattered. Wow, that was hard work. And all that mud. Lots of do inside Manor Hotel. Over there in the distance. We often see it when I, well, we don't see it. We're, we see the turn off because just up there is the A69, uh, A68, sorry, where I often go down Reservoir, Eggs, Hexham, whatever. Uh, so, I'm on the top. <sighs> Out of breath. Anyway. There's just a, another couple of little climbs and then the, the rest of it is either downhill or flat, which I'm pleased. I actually took my hat off, I was that hot. <coughs> I'll just get to this tree here and then it's downhill to the road. There's a road comes from the down the side of the Derwent side uh, manor comes down back of them trees there then around you can probably see it there now it's not the proper road but it's a track should we say um, and the woman who uh, has the the farm you know the where the sheep is, where I just stopped with the sheep. That's the road to go to her house. So uh, I presume most of the time it's only her uses it. Whew, still out of breath. So you've got two ways to go. One's down there. The other one's down here. This is my best bet and then get on the road and then I walk down and then along through them woods just at the edge of this field here all the way along and come out right at the far end uh, and then down onto the river so anyway I'll make my way down here look at the size of that hole underneath the tree
looks fresh as well. Fox or badger or something. Can't read another tree. Yeah, there's a few around here actually. Looks nice and uh, comfortable under there for them anyway. Safe. Unless somebody comes along with terriers, of course. Now this is a bit dodgy because uh, it's downhill in mud. A little bit of water run there, look. But yeah, it's not coming through here. It's going underneath and it comes out down there. There's a little stream you have to cross along here, like. Um, I presume it's still got plenty of water in. I like to watch out for uh, for deer in the fields because you you get them uh, munching in the fields during the day sometimes. And they run for cover into here. I've never actually seen one in the woods, like, but uh, I know they lie down just somewhere in the very hot spot. But uh, I've never come near one, you know, as much as uh, it's jumped up as I got close to it. Right, we're starting with uh, quite a bit of mud again. This is the river that I meant <coughs> where I said you've got to cross. So uh, this could be where the camera ends up in the water. I just uh, I'm just standing in the middle actually on a stone. So. Uh, it. When I when I normally come along, I just walk straight across. But obviously, my feet covered in mud, and it's amazing how uh, what's the word gingerly you go when uh, when you when you know you could slip. So this is where you. You leave the woods for a whoop, for a few minutes into the field and then back in the woods again. It's just the way the track goes. You just go back in along there. Here's our tree again that I filmed, which is lying down but yet grows up so high in a few places that's one thing about coming through the woods very rare you pass anybody there's a main river down there that's where everybody walks mainly that's where I'll be coming on the way back So, uh, just one more bit of a hill to climb around this corner and then uh, it's all downhill and flat after that. Still out of breath, like, actually. Just because it's heavy walking. And uh, very slippy. I've had to actually take me uh, one of my coats off. I had two coats on in my hat because I'm sweating. That was hard work walking up through that up that hill in the woods. This is the end of the woods now. Uh, 
right at the very, very top. And now it's just in a field till I get along to the river. So, uh, not far now to get to the river anyway. Pardon me, I've seen a couple of uh, deer over there, up by that tree there, um, a couple of months ago when I was walking along here. But uh, nothing in sight that day. So, uh, I can hear there's a few people over there next to the river whistling to their dogs and stuff like that. Oh, and uh, I'm off, but I've got to go and do a job for somebody tomorrow. A very uh, important customer and a very good friend of mine. It's just, it's just getting a new satellite box and uh, she can't fit it. She wants me to sort it out for her. So I said I'll be there in the morning. It doesn't matter if it snows, I can walk, because uh, she only lives five minutes walk away, so, well, ten minutes. So that's all right, anyway. Well, I'm out the field now. <clears throat> that's the car park. Uh, I passed yesterday, come back from Hexham, when I mentioned all the cars. <clears throat> There's loads there again. I'm down to the river now, anyway, so... Uh, and that's a caravan park, just here. People have begun through the gas bottles in there, I know that much. They reckon it costs about, uh, I think it was about £70 a month for gas. A lot of money that, like, just for gas. <clears throat> I'm not sure if they get free electric or not. I don't think they do. I've known the, the site owners do not give free electric away because anybody would be buying gas so I'll have electric fires on. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah. I've seen uh, meters outside the caravan. Like, oh, this is mud here, mine. Downhill as well. Um... Not too steep. I'll just have to stay on this bit. So my track is along there anyway. Right the way along. About uh, two mile I think. Left. Something like that. Right I'll make my way down here. I just missed a heron. Just down here. I've seen it fly along there so I'll walk back a bit. Hoping that it was going to land in, again in the water or somewhere but it didn't carry on. Massive birds, like when they open their wings. I suppose they've got to be like, got to have big wings for when they pick the fish to carry it to wherever they want to go and eat. So I'm walking along the side of the caravan park there, as you can see. You can hardly see them caravans in the summer when all the leaves is on the trees and everything. That's where I was before, up there, going this way. I've just put my hat back on, start to feel cold now. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll probably put my big jacket back on as well. I'll wait till I get to the little tree stumps where I usually sit in the fine weather. Because I've, I've got my stick and my camera and me bag and stuff. So I'll put them on there while I'm getting sorted. I don't know what this is like. There's a little uh, silver thing on the tree. It says 0167. Whatever that means. And what it's for, who knows. 
and it's got a like a yellow dot of paint on it as well so this is where I'm going to bump into people I can see somebody coming up now in a blue top just unavoidable here that looks nice doesn't it sounds lovely as well the best one I've ever seen is at Hexham the other side of the bridge I've filmed there a couple of times looks uh, amazing and as I commented at the time I says this could be anywhere in the world this so uh, there's people over there with their kids and their dogs walking on the other side I never had any breakfast yet in the day so uh, getting a bit peckish now somebody over there with a Dalmatian ex-wife used to have one of them in Mexico and uh, it had uh, Down syndrome which I'd never heard of in a dog but as they used to say syndrome of the down <laughs> but uh, I had to be put to sleep eventually but there's a Dalmatian over there I used to fly my drone when I first got one, my very first one, which I sold. But I used to sit at that tree there and just fly around this field, just for practice. And yet when I lived up there in the houses on the top of that hill, I used to fly the drone over here from up there, up and down the river, from sitting in the back garden. Amazing, like. Well, this bit's not so muddy, so that's not so bad. Never seen uh, any fish jump yet. Never seen any ducks this time of year. I don't know where they get to, like, but uh, maybe they're going up or downstream somewhere. My stomach's rumbling and all. I'm getting very, very hungry. But not long to go now before I get back. It's always nice to see in here water rushing over the rocks. Well, I've passed so far one man and his dog and one man and his little young son. So, so far not too bad. Seen a few on the other side, like, but uh, not too many on this side now. <clears throat> Still quite a way to go yet though, so plenty of time to bump into people, I suppose. Um, it's much better when when the, uh, all the grass and everything's not fully grown, when it covers the path and that. Much better this time of year. I know the mud's not much cop like, but uh, you can't have it always. Be a lot worse along here if it uh, starts to snow tonight or tomorrow. There's the pump house. I've made a video around by that before. 
that used to uh, pump water from the river here right up to the top of concert where Tesco is now because it used to be the steelworks and that's this is where they got the water from so that would have been a big expense even all them many years ago put a pipeline in all the way up there and the, the, the water pump in there must have been massive to pump it all the way up that hill because it's a long way up I've got mud and puddles and everything here like whoop <laughs> and they broke me neck there I'm going to have to uh, take my shoes off outside when I get back the day because they're thick of mud I've got uh, cream carpet on the stairs Here's a one for you, by the way. Um, I watch a lot of YouTube and uh, I stumbled across Tyson Fury, who's the heavyweight champion of the world. Big bloke, hard as nails. And uh, I stumbled across an interview with Tyson Fury. And uh, I'm going to sit here for two minutes. And... Um, he talked about suffering with depression. Uh, he's a gypsy. He, he fights under the name of the Gypsy King. And he, he talked all about his depression and he says he suffered it from being a child. And uh, after he won the World Championship, he kind of retired for a while. And he went to 28 stone. Through depression, all he did was eat pizzas and everything like that, and junk food, and uh, drink alcohol. He showed a picture when he was 28 stone, and he explained how he was going to commit suicide, and uh, explained how horrible it is, and you know you can suffer it, and people don't know you've got it because some people are good at hiding it and stuff like that and uh, yeah he was going to drive into a bridge like a bridge on, on a motorway in his Ferrari he says I was doing well I was 100 and anyway I mean it is a horrible thing I've suffered it myself uh, last few years or so I had a, a bit of it and uh, it's a horrible horrible disease hard to get out of once you get in it but um, and he the way he uh, looks after himself he went from 28 stone down to 18 he lost 10 stone and he does that by uh, going to the gym and going for runs and walks and things and he says it's the best cure for him anyway but and any tablets and out like that so uh, yeah I mean I love walking so uh, it does keep you keeps you fit keeps you reasonably healthy and occupies your mind because when you when you do suffer with that sort of thing your your brain just never stops <clears throat> it's a horrible thing i've seen it in other people as well um i've knew people that's had it like personally and uh seen how they suffered but yeah it's a horrible horrible thing anyway i i suggest anybody who does feel like that I mean, I know, you know, this supposed virus, which I don't believe in, but uh, this supposed virus has got all locked in. And there's a lot more people now suffering with anxiety and depression and things like that. But uh, I, I suggest you go and search for them on YouTube. Um, just 
type Tyson Fury uh, chat or Tyson Fury suffering with uh, anxiety and depression and he's, he's talked about it on a few different chat shows so it's worth a watch he really brings it down to earth like really does and uh, you know you don't expect somebody like him big broke world champion suffering depression but here he is telling his story so uh, that's the way it is right I'm back at the fish pass uh, well I'm not back at it like I'm just here the day and I noticed they've been repairing the fence where the little so and so is can I say the word really well, I can but I'm not going to uh, smashed all the fences off so they'll put it up again for people's protection new planks of wood here see how long that lasts I need to try and uh, clean my shoes in this running water because I've only got just along there over the bridge and then I'm walking back on the road so I'm going to try a bit cleaner the shoes so I can right I'm back on the narrow path where you can't avoid passing people almost touch them if you're coming along here there's little spots here and there where you can dive in but not much but uh, I did look before I come along from the end you can see right the way along so I knew I was alright best part of the way quite a few sheep in this field need grass to eat by the looks of it I know they like to munch stuff close to the ground but Christ they're just uh, stand around I don't know if they'll be going to that special place shortly or not for Christmas for us not for them of course bless them maybe that's why they're all in this field easy to catch there's a nice little one there, nice little black head it's got. It's looking at us now, look. Yeah, well. Not far to go. To get to the road, like, of course. Then about, I don't know, half a mile. To get back. So, been enjoyable. I've enjoyed the walk. I can see the bridge from here. There's a little car park at the end of the bridge as well. Oh, I think somebody's come with a dog. Oh no. There's a woman up there coming down the. They're coming down the path that I went up when I started. Me walk. So. They have come the opposite way round. Well. I didn't pass them, so they maybe just went up in the woods and came back again. This is where I was before when I, when all the sheep, up them sheep over there, uh, when they all come running over. So uh, they've got something to eat there now. I see they must have been hungry. Thought I was going to feed them this morning. I think. They've just turned off and went in the field, back towards the woods. And as we've seen on the way here, that's the way I came. It's muddy as hell, so I've reasonably cleaned my shoes now, so I'm going over the 
Love Lock Bridge and uh, stay on the road so yeah still yet padlocks oh. okay just have to see uh, if it changes can't see it changing much now this year like but maybe it's next year these are funny little houses here Um, just two of them like but it's a nice place to live that right, about it <coughs> some woman in a mini must have been out on the on the river somewhere two garages as well probably one for each house just tiny little padlocks on not be many people roaming around here in the dark although I think maybe it's one or two may go into that car park lovers in the cars or something every night time but uh, I've been down here once in the dark and I mean it's pitch black you can't see a thing like even with these little bits of lamps that's quite an interesting sign see what I can get a picture of it built in Shotley Grove house built in 1826 by John Annandale, local paper mill owner. His wife and nine children, nine children, you know. The Shotley Grove Low and High Mills were the first in the north of England. Employed 300 workers in 1881. And you can scan this code for more information. I'll try that when I get home, see if I can scan it from the video, see what happens. And it looks like that's Annandale house. Had to be some size to have nine kids, like. Uh, Peter Mill and I. So, look at the size of it, it comes right along here. One now lives in it now. Be worth a fair few quid that. Look at the length of it. What are you doing here? The windows are very old, like it could be were being modernised a bit. There's a little offshoot on the front. That's the front door there. Looks like you have to go through here to get to there. Very strange. Right, that's Grove Cottage. Oh no, the big houses in them gates look. Hi. Me next door neighbours, when I lived at Westacre, Peter and Pam. They live in Spain now, right? Never heard from them for donkeys, they're not alive or dead or what. But they had this place here, they used to rent it. And Peter used to keep his caravan there. It's got, it's got that rick in, like. He used to, uh, him and her used to dig up old furniture and that. So that'll be a dummy camera, of course, I would imagine. A lot of rats in there now, which you can expect next to and by the river. They just get underneath the door there, in and out. Horrible things, aren't they? 
there's signs no fly tipping. See if anybody's fly tipped next to the signs. I can't see anything like, but that uh, like archway thing when I'm walking along the other side, I said I'd often go to it. I'd go sometime. It's actually just down round that corner. But I'm not going to do it, it's too muddy. So, uh, because I I noticed from the other side this blue container was like at the back of it. So uh, that's how I knew where it was just now. A lot of rubbish in there. That's a fire waiting to happen, isn't it? Some kids will be uh, lighting that if they've seen it. I don't know what this is actually. Looks like a dump, a dumping ground. There's a bit of fly tipping guns on here, that's for sure. Look at this lot just being chucked over the fence. Aye, there was no cars here when I came. There was quite a few. Right, anyway, I'm going to wrap it up on that one. Um, quite a long video, I know. Thanks for watching anyway, and uh, three days till Christmas, eh? Not long now. Time for the kids to get all excited. Right, so thanks for watching. Stay safe. Hope uh, you get what you want for Christmas. Thanks a lot and bye for now. Take care.